they say, be wary of meeting your heroes. That's not the case with Countach. It's about fun, it's about passion, it's about sports, it's about exhilaration. It's about sensory input, it's the thrill. Learning how to drive it and mastering how it works and it talking to you and you commanding it appropriately and working as a unit. Those are things that only analog and older cars give you. Because these cars beg to be driven and need to be driven, I will take the kid or kids to school, drop them off and then just hit the canyons and have a nice drive. And I come back exhilarated, refreshed. I've forgotten about all the junk I had on my mind before. It's a better way to start the day than a $10 cup of coffee, right? <laughs> There's nine different variants of a Countach. The 1988 is one of the final variations. There's a fuel-injected U.S. spec, and there's the downdraft four-valve per cylinder carbureted European spec one. And the one we drove today was the carbureted downdraft Countach, which was the highest horsepower Countach ever made at 455, and was the fastest production car at that time. The feeling of driving the Countach can be exhilarating, it can be exhausting. You have instant throttle response. There's not even a fraction of a second delay when you push a throttle and something happens. First you hear the carbs and then you hear the exhaust come out. All that is a symphony. Sometimes you smell the gasoline. It's a sensory feast. It has world-class handling, but it's all analog. The steering wheel is talking to you, and that's why you just drive it to drive it. And when you drive it, and it does what you want it to do, and all the senses are feeling that, it's a reward. And then every time you get back in it, it's fun. And that reward comes back. I love to work on them as well. And growing up on a ranch, we repaired lots of things. It was fascinating to learn how engines worked. And when I started collecting cars, I was curious how they worked, and I would repair them myself. It was almost like a therapeutic thing to take it apart, figure out how they made it, and be fascinated with the engineering that went into sometimes just a little faster. It was amazing, the engineering that went into something that simple. And repairing them is also rewarding because you're keeping them on the road. And somebody else is going to enjoy that car if you keep it going. And sometimes I'll pick the kids up after school in a cool car and bring them back to the shop and we'll look at it and discuss how this works, how that works, and hey, will you clean the, all the brake dust off the wheels because that'll damage the paint if we just let it sit there. And they love to help and they're excited about it and they, they love to be involved. But it makes me feel good as a father. I'm passing on you know, an old car aspect of life on down and I hope that they appreciate it and enjoy it because imagine how boring the world will be when everyone just jumps in their autonomous pod and they just get taken. But hopefully we'll always be able to get in our old cars and drive them the way they were meant to be. The most rewarding part of it is just driving it and just go through the gears and try something new with it. You know, try shifting at this point or that point, see how it behaves differently. Then you learn what it likes, what it doesn't like and learning how it works and finding that sweet spot where everything is harmonious with you and vice versa. Just get in it and go. My name is Victor Holtorf and this is why I drive.